먹고 있죠. 엉, 좀 랩가, 만 독, 좀 랩가, 내 뜻, 삼 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 랩가, Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so for the record, I'd like to just give the names and dates of testimony of those that were in the video that we just showed. So, first appearing was Mio Pio, who testified on 29 February 2016. Secondly, Himan, from 28 September 2015 and 17 September of that year. Then no Sata's from 28 September 2015. Fifth son from 7 December, excuse me, 7 September 2015. And finally, Ahmed Sophia, or Mas, otherwise known as Masor, who testified 13 January 2016. So, Your Honours, it has never been the prosecution case, nor is it required for a finding of genocide that we prove that the Khmer Rouge attempted to kill every single child in Cambodia. What is required is that there is an attempt to destroy a group and hold or impart as such. And I talked about the word as such, I think in French, or Italian, or Italian, I think it's Doik Bokia. What that word must mean, we say it means to destroy the group identity. That is what genocide is designed to protect, not individuals, but the group. The same controversy surrounds a bit the word destroy. There are some books, even in some dicta from cases, where courts have said the word destroy must mean physically or biologically. Although, like in the cursed judgment, they say that, but then they say that deporting the women and children from Srebrenica was intent to destroy the group. Clearly, deporting doesn't mean killing biologically. When we talk about this in more detail in our final brief, we submit that it absolutely cannot be reconciled with the words of the Genocide Convention that destroy only means to kill people, to destroy the DNA of the members of the group. And that can be seen if we go back to the definition and how genocide can be accomplished. One of the five acts is transferring children of the group. You transfer children, you don't kill anyone. The DNA lives on. But if you take children away from their group, ในประเทศเขมรเดียวไปจนในประเทศเขมรเดียวไปจนในประเทศเขมรเดียวไปจนในประเทศเขมรเดียวไปจนในประเทศเขมรเดียวไปจนในประเทศเขมรเดียวไ
But that got well. on some the history of young the DK policy and its effect at San Kui. He was from the central zone, and he told the court that after the Khmer Rouge had taken control of the area, Cham people were merged with Khmer people. Traditional clothes, religion was abolished at the time, and they were turned into Khmer people. We wanted to testify that in 1977, it has changed. Khmer people were arrested and sent to, uh, to uh, Wat Atrakon Pagoda to be killed. And he explained the reasons for these policies. He said that the CPK did not want any Cham people or other ethnicities to live in the country. But rather, they only wanted to have one pure race. They killed with the intent to destroy the Cham as a distinct ethnic and religious group. So now I'm going to move on to another section and talk a little bit about the accused. I entitled this little section my own notes, The Gang of Three, for reasons I hope will become apparent to you shortly. But I want to talk about, we've discussed in each of the crimes some of the ways that the accused were connected to those particular policies. All of my colleagues are talking about enslavement, and talking about forced marriage, and talking about security centers, and talking about the role of the accused in those policies. But I want to speak for a few minutes about their role more generally. There's no question that the top of the CPK, the top position in the DK, which is an authoritarian regime, no election, no one chose them. They came to power through, through battle, through force, and through deception, pretending that they were in a front with Sihanouk, hiding the fact that their real ideology, even their being communists until 1976. No elections. They had fake elections for a parliament headed by Nunchea. So how were decisions made in that kind of environment? Well, Q. Sampan would certainly know. And he wrote in his book, Considerations on the History of Cambodia, following. He said, in communist states, all decisions are made inside a central leadership framework, and the implementation of those decisions must be carried out the same by each individual. The Cambodia of the Khmer Rouge had discipline. They respected and obeyed the instructions of the central committee of the CPK. Your Honours, there's no question like in any organization, the center, the higher-ups give orders, they're carried out, they're implemented by those lower down. There has to be some measure of discretion for those lower down. Every single decision cannot be decided by the very top leaders. But that doesn't mean that Kisampan and Nunchea can avoid their responsibility for the policies they set and for the crimes that fit those policies. The statute of the Communist Party of Cambodia, E3214, states that in regards to the army, all three categories of the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia, the regular army, the sector, and the militias, must be under the absolute leadership monopoly of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. And if we look at E312, a decision we're all familiar with, but I'd like to show it on the screen for the audience. Um, this was a decision of the Central uh, Committee. Pol Pot and Nunchi, of course, were part of that. From the 30th of March, 1976. And the first matter that it deals with is the right to smash inside and outside the ranks. We know what that means, the right to kill inside and outside the ranks of the party. 
It indicates the objective is that there is a framework and absolute implementation of our revolution to strengthen our socialist democracy. All this to strengthen our state authority. And then it says that this right to kill people and the base framework is decided by the zone committee surrounding the central office by the central office committee and in the independent sectors by the standing committee and the military by the general staff. So Nguyen Chi accused some Phan can't evade responsibility for how killings were implemented by those below them when they were specifically authorized to do those killings. And those killings followed the policies set by Ankara, by the center. Philip Short testified in this court in 2013. He said it would not have been possible for zone commanders to act against or outside the last, the broad policy consensus which had been laid down by the center. He told the defense council at the time, you're dealing with an army which was quite small, not an enormous force, and it was an army which was very rigidly controlled. Your Honor, the central leaders set these criminal policies in four different ways. First, through their orders and the decisions that they issued. Second, through the speeches and trainings. We had many witnesses who talked about local cadre coming to Phnom Penh, receiving training specifically, including training from Kisampan and Nguyen And third, another very important way that they set this policy is by setting the example. No place set the example for the terror of the regime better than S-21 did, the center's own security center, where even those closest to the central leaders of Pol Pot and Xi and Kisampan were taken to be killed. And also in the way that the killings were carried out in Phnom Penh following the capture of the victory of 17 April, when former members, leaders of the old regime, the military, and others were gathered together and killed. It again is that Khmer proverb, the back foot follows the front foot. These center leaders set a clear example of the kind of ruthless, brutal policies they wanted followed. And finally, they ensured these policies were carried out by killing anyone who advocated a less radical path, such as Hu Yun. We've seen in telegrams the zones reporting to the center, the sectors taking instructions from the center. We've seen the zone and sector district cadre, commune cadre going to Phnom Penh for trainings. We know that the very top of this hierarchy was Paul Pot. But as Q Sampan told the radio audience in 2007, he said, quote, Pol Pot hunted down and made arrests with the participation from the standing committee. He never did anything alone. And Q Sampan would know this because he was at those standing committee meetings, as we've seen from the surviving documents. But even more importantly, Q Sampan, they were Pol Pot's closest associates. And I want to be clear, we are not saying that they were among Pol Pot's closest associates because the evidence shows more than that. It shows that Pol Pot's two closest associates, the center center, consisted of Pol Pot, Pot Nguyen Chia, and Q Sampan. This gang of three who together were the very center in ensuring the policies of Pol Pot were carried out in conveying that to the zones and to others, targeting any rivals who they suspected could possibly uh, challenge their rule 
ហើយកសាវិតអូមានចំណុចជាថាកម្ពុជាឆ្នាំសុនឯកសារបីលើ <coughs> គាត់បានបានសិក្សាកម្មថាប្រេគ្ហាស្ទ៍ <coughs> 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 It's not just P. Poon that says this. Some P. Poon did an recorded interview. Somebody kiss and pawn the kind of kiss and pick up daily life. Paul Pot and Moon Chia had meals with me and we had meals together. We did nothing separately. You and I to a wife sit no like the clear line. Oh, by Moy Moy Bamboon. Moon Chia. Corroborated that he said exactly the same thing in ซึ่งสิกึนกําลังปราศรัยการในขณะสมนมเรื่องสมปีซอนรวยไฮเลเวลคาดซึ่งสิกึนคือจะกําลังปราจนขบพูมาปีมันตีบอกและอีกคนที
ពីសម្ព័ន្ធគាត់ជាសម្ព័ន្ធបាត់ប៉ុតដែរអញ្ចឹងបាននៃថាសម្ម៉ោលពីសម្ព័ន្ធពីរាវ about his relationship. ແລະຕາລຸກນັກປົນປົນເດນັກປາສເກປີປໍສະຕິນຕັດຕາຣາກໍຈະມະນຸດກໍາລໍບານນະປູນສໍາລັບພວກເຈີງນຸນຊຽ
ហើយគាត់រិកុនថាគាត់មិនមានជាវិធីពិតជាមិនមានជាវិធីពិតជាមិនមានជាវិធីពិតជាមិនមានជាវិធីពិតជាមិនមានជាវិធីពិតជាម
Est-ce que tu as un jeune Je ne pourrais pas attribuer ça à propos puisque je n'ai pas le même So we see that, Your Honors, even in this short segment, Houston Fan is contradicting himself, claiming first he knew nothing about what went on, he doesn't didn't know anything about the killings, and claiming Paul Pot had reasons for everything he did. Well, how would he know Paul Pot had reasons if he didn't know what was occurring? Of course he knew. He was the head of state. He, he's testified for OCIJ that he